Thank you very much. Gosh, look at all of you. I'm like all over the place. What section is that back there? <clears throat> I mean, at least you know you won't get bored while this is happening. You can just bring a book. I mean, you don't even, didn't even have to bring one. You can just reach back and grab one. Um, <clears throat> so this is Vocal Minority. Uh, my name's Carl Pantel. I'm the director of these guys. I'm also the principal pianist. Thanks. <laughs> I'm also the principal pianist for the main chorus, which has about uh, 260, 270 right now that we're going to take the stage uh, for the Elton John show that you all have. Uh, you'll have tickets to it after tonight, right? <laughs> Great. Perfect. All you have to just go online. You'll find them there. Uh, we'll, you're, we're going to sing along with you later on. Are you excited about that? <laughs> awesome. Do you like Elton John? All right. I mean, there's a couple people. All right, good. <laughs> He's a little bit of an unknown, so, you know. Um, <laughs> so, let me just give you a little history on the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. How many of you have been to a Gay Men's Chorus concert before? Oh, you don't need any history at all. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm going to talk anyway, so here we go. Uh, <laughs> so, the, the Gay Men's Chorus, there was a... a there was a gay uh, band in San Francisco in the late 70s, uh, and their conductor uh, decided, after they had so much popularity with the band, that they should, uh, make a, they should um, assemble a choir of gay men who could sing for different events. And uh, so they formed, they had a rehearsal, got together and sang some tunes, and then on about a month later, I believe it was, uh, on the night that uh, Mayor Moscone and Harvey Milk were assassinated, uh, there was a candlelight vigil on the steps of City Hall, and the chorus decided that they were going to, this newly formed chorus decided that they were going to attend and were asked to sing. And so that was their very first performance was that night. 
Um, and ever since then, we've been very active in the community, uh, bringing our message of uh, harmony and acceptance and all of the things that, you know, that we're here tonight to bring to you. And, you know, in the years that have passed since then, a lot of, a lot of the world has changed in some ways. And especially here in the Bay Area, we kind of get used to this, you know, warm bath water of acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so staying relevant in this time is something that we uh, strive to uh, accomplish. And uh, we definitely do that. We do lots of uh, performances. We do lots of sing outs such as this. We actually have three ensembles that we send out to do these kinds of performances. Um, there's this group, Vogue Minority. We have Swag and the Lollipop Guild. <clears throat> I know, right? <clears throat> Um, so we do a lot of events like this and go out into the community and tell our story and um, we also have been doing a lot of world premieres recently. Um, our very last concert was a world premiere of Twitter Leader and uh, we did a premiere of a Jake Heggy opera. I don't know if you know who Jake Heggy is. Yes, he's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> that was uh, really, really amazing. And part of that was being able to tell uh, another side of the story and, and things that are happening in other parts of the world, making people in this community aware that you know, the struggle still continues, not just here and you know, not just in America, but all over the place uh, with acceptance of uh, queer people, uh, anybody who is different from, from anybody else. Um, so that is what we what we're here to do. Um, we're getting ready for. We're actually going to try and do a, a recording this summer of some pieces that we're working on. Uh, and this group, we've been together. How long has this been group been intact? Thirteen years? Ten years? Thirteen years. These particular guys have been together for what a year now. These singers, um, and they're just. They're wonderful. I love working with them, love coming to work. It's like the best part of my week. Uh, it's really, really great. Anything you guys have to add? <laughs> they paid me to say that. Um, we tour sometimes. We are attending uh, next summer. We'll attend a festival of gay and lesbian choruses in Denver. And uh, we went to Wyoming the last time we were there. It happens every four years. Um, and so we, we haven't done a lot of tours. There was a big tour that took place uh, shortly after the chorus was formed. That was in 1981. Someone from the chorus actually uh, mortgaged their house to be able to pay for everybody to go on this tour. And uh, it was pretty amazing and pretty epic for that time. Um, you know, the AIDS crisis had not, you know, really seen its full effects, but for them to be going out uh, that really valiant group of men to go out and share their story with the rest of America was really astounding and kind of groundbreaking for that time. And this is actually the oldest, uh, the Gay Men's Chorus is the first chorus to use the word gay in its name. And since then there have been uh, just huge amounts of organizations that have uh, formed worldwide um, that are gay men's choruses and um, you know, mixed choruses. In the Bay Area, we're kind of spoiled. We have this chorus, we have the Oakland East Bay Gay Men's Chorus, we have the Silicon Valley Gay Men's Chorus, we have uh, the Lesbian and Gay Chorus of San Francisco, we have, is that it? Oh, the Golden Gate Men's Chorus. Those are all affiliated with the Gay and Lesbian, gay and lesbian Association of Choruses. So you have lots to choose from. But we're really glad you're here, so come, to, come see us, because, you know, we're, we're the originals. Uh, <laughs> good. We're going to do a little bit of Q&A after this, but I want to let you guys hear them sing some more. Are you ready? Yes. All right. In every heart there is a 
Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> and he remembered all the cuts we made. <laughs> We've changed these around so many times on these guys. <laughs> so they're doing an awesome job. Um, do you recognize all those songs? All right, all right. Do you want more? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so we're going to do one more, uh, just us, and then we're going to have a rehearsal, and we'll let them go away. Not really. We'll, we'll have them stay. But uh, we'll have a little rehearsal just to make sure that we know our part uh, for the sing-along. You, did you all get word sheets? Yeah. All right. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you scared? <laughs> You're not scared. Not even nervous a little bit. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. This is Can You Feel the Love Tonight? <clears throat>
Thank you. All right, now it's your turn. <laughs> Y'all warmed up? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have enough alcohol? Because <laughs> this part's real high. Let's see if you know this tune. It goes like this. Do you know that? All right. The words are uh, semi-difficult, but, you know, uh, just try it on La first. Okay? So it goes like this. And it's way up here. La! All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four. La! You ready? I get the solo on this one. <laughs> Actually, I will invite you all to sing along with all of the words. If you know it, then sing along, okay? Here we go. You ready? Okay, here we go. see this with you know 270 guys on stage because it's gonna be a rocking good time because I don't know how many of there you are uh, in here tonight but there will be what does that theater hold uh, 1500 about people singing along with you it's gonna be amazing <laughs> all right uh, how many of you know your song 
Yeah? All right. Do you know all the words? Other than the ones that we gave you on that sheet? All right, we're going to try. So we're going to do your song combined with Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. All right? Here we go. sound great <laughs> but you know this isn't church where you're like you know well I don't even know if you go to church I have to go to church because that's how I make my living other than doing this uh, it's almost the same thing uh, <laughs> so uh, you know you don't have to worry about scaring your neighbor away just sing out okay you ready so let's bring it up like two dynamic levels all right this is no longer a ballad this is like a, a rock rock power ballad ready and you can tell everybody. Ready? And a one. And you can tell everybody. This is your song. It may be quite simple, but now that it's done. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is while you're Save myself from falling 
Do you want to sing some more? <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> so much fun for us. Um, <laughs> we, weren't, we were wondering how an Elton John sing-along show would really take off, but judging by... You're our test audience, so are you... Is it good? All right. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're going to open up the floor to you to ask any of us questions that you may have. Yeah. So we, uh, th- that's a great question. Um, we, we performed Jake Heggie's For a Look or a Touch, uh, which is the story about uh, two men who, uh, one of them who survived the Holocaust and uh, one who uh, perished and came back to the, the one that lived as a, a ghost or a spirit and um, asks him to remember the wonderful times that they had together in pre-war Berlin. And it was... It was tough. It was really, um, you know, number one, the music was tough. I mean, just learning the opera itself, it's not necessarily an idiom that we always, uh, that, we're, that we all understand. And, and what's great about the chorus is that these guys are all volunteers. I mean, they volunteer their time. Uh, they, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Ch- feel free to chime in. <laughs> because we like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, because they, they, they love singing in the chorus. And it was, a, it was a very, it was a challenging piece for sure for us to get into. Clint? You know, and as Carl said, it, it can be difficult to kind of make these kinds of changes. But one of the things that is, you know, a message that the chorus has is that we are more alike than we are different. So regardless of what the piece is, we find a way to attach to it because the, so many of the stories that we tell are universal. So you know, we have a couple of weeks where we're kind of trying to wrestle with, you know, what does this mean to me? How are we going to deliver this story? How do we connect with it? How do we get the audience to connect to the story from a, you know, many different viewpoints? So it, you know, it takes a couple of weeks and it's a little bit of work, but we seem to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the question was, did you get, did y'all hear it? Okay, okay. So uh, she said that she was getting emotional uh, as an audience member, and do we ever get emotional while we are singing? And the answer is definitely yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, not too long ago, we did a, a show called, uh, a show um, uh, of all Stephen Schwartz music. Stephen Schwartz wrote Wicked and Godspell and a bunch of other Broadway and, and um, music for movies and television. And um, he wrote a, spe- a song specifically for us called Testimony. And it was taken from a text from the It Gets Better Project uh, that you may be familiar with. Um, basically about the, the difficulty of youth uh, growing up gay and, um, and lesbian different. And um, the challenges and the despair that they often feel. Uh, and suicide. And um, it's the most amazing piece. The first half of it is all about despair and loneliness and um, wishing things to change and they won't and praying to God for yourself to change and then you don't and it's despair and then it changes and the second half of the piece is redemption and family and community and the love that you find in your family of choice um, and the redemption from that and I swear to God I have been singing that song now for five years and I cry every single time so I have deep seated pain I don't know but that's <laughs> yeah it's it's tough our our uh, artistic director Tim Selig uh, who is uh, an amazing man you know he encourages us to, or encourages these guys to really feel that emotion, really dig deep in themselves. 
and have that moment in rehearsal so that when they get out on the stage, <laughs> you know, we aren't like a puddle on the stage. <clears throat> because, you know, you didn't pay money for, to see our catharsis. We'll go to therapy for that. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so we work really hard about feeling those emotions, but then um, using that energy to, to bring that out in our audience members. So that is a big part of what we do. Um, are you? <laughs> it happens, it happens. Um, I, yeah. Oh, she said that she was choked up right now. So, it, it's a common thing. Yes. Uh, the chorus, the main chorus, practices three hours a week on Mondays. Uh, these guys are also part of the, the larger chorus, but then we have a two-hour practice on Thursday nights. So we do what we do in two hours a week, which is, like, amazing. <laughs> it's great. Is the opera on DVD? The opera, uh, the Jake Heggie opera, we actually recorded, we did a live recording of both nights, and so we're hoping to release that recording, uh, and Jake Heggie was really involved in that, and picked his cream of the crop instrumentalists and uh, soloists, which was pretty awesome. There is a DVD recording of that particular show done by the Seattle Men's Chorus as well. Although I don't know if that's something that they sell or if it's an archival thing, but um, you know. But we will definitely have a recording of us doing it. Uh, I don't know. Yes, yes, give us your emails, give us all the things that we can get a hold of you by. <laughs> For what it's worth, the recording of Passion will be out sometime about August, September, is what we're shooting for. So I stage manage these guys, and I work in the office, so. <laughs> Thanks, Will. <laughs> Will. Will has done three of these uh, outreach events in the last, what, three days? Yeah, he's, he's a busy, busy guy. Uh, I hate choosing. Okay, yeah, all right. I don't know if Elton John knows about our program. His lawyers do. Yes. <laughs> yes, getting the rights to perform Elton John music is not cheap. So uh, it's been... And plus we're doing, you know, parts of the Disney... Uh, you know, obviously we did Can You Feel the Love Tonight... Uh, you cannot do anything that relates to any part of the production of The Lion King. I mean, there will be no, like, stuffed Simba that we will raise up at the end. Um, you know, it's, it's lots of money, lots of money. Yeah. Uh, we're... I think we were probably about... Well, we have a lot right now. I mean, we've, uh, just in the last, what, four or five years, we went from like 125, 150 to over 300. So on the books right now, I don't know, Will, you work with that more than I do. <laughs> Tell us. Give us the nitty-gritty. Including people that aren't currently singing but are part of the chorus and we consider the family, there's almost 340 of us right now. <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. We have had straight men in the gay men's chorus. Do we have one now? Just the one? <laughs> That'd be a fun party game, huh? <laughs> Find him. It's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> I don't even know who it is. Now I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be scanning. Who doesn't moisturize? <laughs> yes. Our Christmas show, we, uh, we actually do a lot during, uh, during the holidays. Uh, this year we'll be doing an out-of-town show in Santa Cruz, and we'll do one in Santa Rosa. 
uh, which are traditionally uh, performances that we do the week before we do our in-town concert in San Francisco. So I believe the first weekend are our away shows. The second weekend of December are our shows in San Francisco on a Friday and a Saturday. And then we do three shows at the Castro Theater on Christmas Eve. Five o'clock, seven o'clock, and nine o'clock. And it's packed. I mean, there are so many people that have made that part of their holiday tradition. And it's a blast. We have such a good time. It's, I mean, it's a tiring day for the chorus members, for sure. But it's uh, very rewarding. So one of the stories about our, our Christmas concert is that it, it started um, it actually started at Christmas time, and I think originally it was called the Christmas concert. But it was started because um, I think it was maybe 25 years ago, um, in the height of the AIDS crisis, gay men had nowhere to go, and they had no families. Um, and it was this community in San Francisco that got together. Um, a lot of the lesbians, a lot of the women um, of San Francisco pulled us together. And we created an, an event for the gay community to come home at, at Christmas time or at the holiday time. And that's how it got started. Um, and it became so popular that uh, they, you know, over the years they added another show. It, it was, you know, seven o'clock show. They added one at nine o'clock. It got really popular. We added another one at five o'clock. And now we do a pre-Christmas time uh, concert in the beginning or middle of December. And, uh, and we do our road shows as well. But it just shows you the love that this community has for its own. And we're so grateful. And again, the guy from the office. Um, December the 6th is going to be our Santa Rosa concert. <laughs> the 11th and 12th will be our official Christmas concert at Norse. And then, of course, um, Christmas Eve will be our Castro Theater. <laughs> he is really earning his money today. Good job, girl. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, for this upcoming show? Uh, oh, for Christmas. We actually don't have a matinee this Christmas. I think they're both evening shows uh, on a Friday and Saturday night. Um, but the Castro Theater show is, I mean, there's lots of kids at the 5 o'clock show. I kid you not that someone put their child up on the podium behind our artistic director last year. <laughs> He's dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering how you recruit if someone <laughs> 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 um, Well, all of these guys auditioned. The oh, the question is uh, how do we recruit <clears throat> and get people to come to the chorus? For the choir. <laughs> oh. um, for the choir. <laughs> We, <laughs> we have auditions. Uh, we have open auditions. We, we have, you know, if we put it out into the community that we're having auditions. And we usually have an open rehearsal where we ask people to come and just check us out and see if it's something that they're willing to do. Because it's, you know, it's not just the three hours a week uh, in rehearsal. We have events like this. We have sectional rehearsals. We go away for retreats. We do all kinds of things. And so it is a, a commitment. It really is like joining a family or a community when you come into the chorus. And some people are very prepared for that, and they want to immerse themselves in that. And some people are like, Meh, I don't know if I want to do all that. Um, but yeah, they, they come. They audition. All of these guys auditioned at some point. Yeah? <laughs> I think. Uh, wait, so how long, okay, how long have you, who's been singing in the chorus the longest? How many years? 26. <laughs> 26 years. That is a long time. Um, <laughs> it's a long, long time. Good. Other questions? We didn't, we didn't program any more music. Oh, we can do, we can do one more. Did you, if you were gay? If you were gay? All right, you wanna hear one more? 
Are you sure? Go drink more wine. <laughs> <laughs>